It turns out that the blob may be to blame for California's severe drought and the starving sea lions on beaches. The blob refers to a stretch of unusually warm water about 1,000 miles wide and 300 feet deep along the west coast. Climate researcher Art Miller with Scripps Institution of Oceanography is in studio with me to explain the blob. It appears that scientists first discovered the blob back in 2013. Is this area of warm water related to global warming? Do you know what caused the blob? Well, we know what caused the, the blob mechanistically in the sense that the atmosphere was in an anomalous state for many months, and that's what essentially drove the pattern of warming that we've observed. Um, that same atmospheric pattern that has been forcing the ocean to be warm is essentially the same pattern that's been causing our drought. So it's not that the blob has any real influence on the atmosphere when it comes to causing the drought. It's basically a signature of the same atmospheric pattern that has driven the drought over the last couple of years. So is there a connection, though, between climate change and this blob? The climate change aspect, well, we, we, we never really know until um, we look you know, 10 years in the future and see whether the climate has actually you know, moved into this new state for a long period of time. But what we can say is that this warm condition that we're observing right now l would look very f similar to what we would see about 50 years from now if global warming was a thing that was driving it. Right now, it looks to be a natural climate variation and not a signature of global warming. But it essentially, the, the, it essentially can help us to help the ocean to emulate what will happen 50 years from now when it is going to be warmer in the upper ocean. And, and we can look now at the marine ecosystem and try to use that as sort of a diagnostic tool of what to expect in the future, but even though the mechanism driving it isn't necessarily global warming. And what is the tie between the state's current record drought and this, this patch of warm water? Right, so the, the same atmospheric flows that, that drove the ocean into this warm state are the same flows that prevented uh, rainfall events in, in the wintertime that led to the drought that we have right now. That's the connection. So since warm water can uh, emit heat into the air, causing moisture and, and rain, is there any indication that our drought might be turning around as a result of this warm water and that we might be in for wetter weather? That's, that's something that you can't, you can't use the ocean to make that, that, that distinction. The ocean does have two particular effects on the atmosphere that you can associate with the warm water. One, if you have this really warm water mass next to the California coast, during the times when we have a marine layer, the marine layer becomes more unstable and breaks up, so there's actually less clouds and more sunshine due to the warm water. That's a local effect right along the coast. The second thing is that as, as the air moves across the ocean, if it's anomalously warm, and then arrives in land, of course it picks up a little bit of heat and it's a little bit warmer, but it really doesn't cause the rainfall events. Those are being driven by atmospheric processes that are on a much larger scale and are not determined by the anomalous state of the ocean. So let's talk about sea life. It's believed that this warm water is affecting sea life in what way? Tell me about that. Oh, that's the thing that's really exciting because here you have this 100 meter thick mass of warm water that's capping um, the processes in the ocean that tend to um, set up the basics of the marine ecosystem. That is, we need to get nutrients that are buried at depth up to the surface and that, that warm water is essentially a stratified cap that keeps that mixing from happening. So even, if, if, even in the presence of upwelling favorable winds that can drive the marine ecosystem into producing uh, the, the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, the fish that feed on that, the marine mammals that feed on the fish, even though that the upwelling variable winds are happening, that, that warm water mass is slowing that process down. And so we don't really know what's going to happen with um, the entirety of the marine ecosystem over this, this time period of, of the, um, the warm anomaly. So the food um, is there, but the fish can't get to it. The nutrients are trying to get up to the surface, but it's being blocked by this, by this warm water mat at the top of the, sur uh, top of the ocean. And so what are some initial effects of that that, that well, you're seeing? Well, it's, it's in, uh, off the California coast and off the uh, U.S. West Coast, um, there's been a reduction in productivity that's been associated with that. So, for instance, the number of sardines has been reduced particularly, and that's a forage fish for things like uh, stellar sea lion, or sorry, the uh, California sea lions. And so a lot of the, the die-offs may be associated with the, l the lack of the sardines being available in the diet of the sea lions. And that then leads to pups that are malnourished, and then they end up on the beaches that we uh, like to try to rescue. 
Um, and on the other hand, if you go up into the Gulf of, Gulf of Alaska, that warm water mass goes all the way up into the Gulf of Alaska, and it's actually, we've seen some increases in productivity up there because it's a different physical system that supports the ecosystem. So it sounds like there's a lot of fluctuation here. Right. Art Miller, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you.